The Lerick story begins in 1936, when the Air Ministry issued specification R136, calling for a medium-range flying boat designed to undertake anti-submarine, convoy escort and reconnaissance duties, replacing the Saunders Row London and Supermarine Stranra biplane flying boats then in service. Saunders Row, a flying boat company based on the Isle of Wight, designed their model A36, later to be named Lerick after the Scottish town with the same name, to meet this specification, and eventually in June of 1937, they received a contract for 21 aircraft. The Lerick was made of all-metal construction and housed a crew of six. Inside the aircraft, there was a workbench and vice, lavatory, sleeping facilities, as well as cooking and fresh water equipment. Power came from a pair of Bristol Hercules 2 engines, producing 1,375 horsepower and a max speed of 215 miles per hour could be achieved. Cruising speed was 165 miles per hour. Armament consisted of seven machine guns, one in a nose turret, two in a dorsal turret and four in the rear turret. Some later examples are said to have carried an additional gun in the nose turret. Up to 2,000 pounds of ordnance could be carried, including depth charges. It seems that the original prototype was built with twin fins and rudders before changing to a single fin and rudder design. The first Lerick took to the skies on the 31st of October 1938. It was quickly found that its flying qualities were poor. It lacked lateral stability and during straight and level flying was found that it could not be flown hands off as the aircraft had a tendency to yaw and roll. This was far from ideal for an aircraft designed to undertake patrols lasting 8 hours. If this wasn't bad enough, if an engine was lost, it was unable to keep altitude or heading. Other problems included hydraulic issues resulting in the bomb bays randomly opening during flight and the wing floats breaking off. To try and remedy these problems, a number of changes were made to the design, including increasing the wing angle of incidence and enlarging the vertical fin. These changes seem to have done little to remedy the problems nor the vicious store characteristics the Lyric possessed. In June 1939, the first four were sent to No. 240 Squadron based at RAF Coalshot to undertake surface trials. It didn't take long for problems to arise and in October those in service were granted, with the London flying boat the aircraft it was meant to replace being brought back into service. In December 1939, No. 209 Squadron based at Oban began utilising the Lerick if it wasn't for the outbreak of the Second World War, there's probably a very good chance the Lerick program would have been scrapped there and then. However, Britain was short of supplies and desperate for machinery, so production of the Lerick continued on into 1940. Between 1940 to early 1941, the Lerick was used for patrols out over the sea northwest of Scotland. However, it rarely encountered the enemy. In service, pilots reported some difficulty taking off with a full load. One pilot who flew it in training recounted, quote, With no bombs and about half fuel load and a crew of eight, it was quite tricky to get airborne in a straight line. This was due to the high torque reaction with two Hercules engines on takeoff being liable to cause a violent swing to starboard. Owing to the short waterline and the relatively small fin and rudder, once the swinger started, the only safe cure was to abandon takeoff and start again, as it was impossible to regain control. End quote. The final eight Lerics were produced with Hercules 6 engines, and the final example came off the production line towards the end of 1940. With the arrival of sufficient numbers of American consolidated Catalina flying boats in around April-May 1940, the Lerick was retired from frontline service. From here, the Lerick was utilised by No. 4 Operational Training Unit at Eva Gordon to help train crews on flying boats. In 1942, Lerics found another training role with numbers 422 Squadron and 423 Squadron of the Royal Canadian Air Force. Here they were used to train Canadian airmen on flying boats. By the end of 1942, the type was retired from service, with those that remained scrapped. It is perhaps not surprising that the Lerick had a significantly high incident rate. Of the 21 built, 10 were lost in incidents and another loss for unknown reasons. It was not a great aircraft, if anything quite a dangerous aircraft and perhaps one of the worst designs put into service by the Royal Air Force.